Hello everyone, this is gear 204 here, and welcome back to another Minecraft World War 1 vehicle tutorial. In this tool, we'll be going ahead and building the British Mark V male version. The Mark V was one of the very first tanks ever made. It was used by the British and uh, was designed again as just a breakthrough tank. The male version here has the two cannons to the sides. There's also a female version which replaces the cannons with um, more machine guns. So uh, you can either really you can just really modify this to have machine guns or if you want to have the cannons have the cannons really doesn't matter too much uh but this version here specifically is the middle version because let's be honest the middle version is the core version of the mark fives with that though i do want to go ahead and mention a few quick things pop it up on screen now and also in the video description you will see the command for invisible item frames we will be using invisible item frames throughout the build you can still use normal item frames but invisible item frames are the way to go as you can see here with this bed that looks that's just sitting seamlessly on the side of that block and also this nether star. Um, that is what we're going to be going ahead and using. We're also going to be going ahead and using the debug stick, which can be accessed by the command popping up on screen now. And also in the video description, there will be a command for that as well for you just to copy and paste. This debug stick is going to be only for Java, um, but it is going to be a useful tool for us to go ahead and do some little modifications um, to the build. But again, it's not something that's absolutely needed to build a build for yourself. Uh, with that though, that's it for what I want to cover in this intro. Let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. So before we go ahead and jump into this tutorial, I do want to go ahead and real quickly mention that I am using a resource pack that was mentioned at the beginning of the video, and you can also find it in the video description. What I do want to mention is I am using Dark Prismarine for this, uh, for this build. Now, if you are not using the resource pack, you're going to want to just use normal prismarine. So for the sake of the video, I'm just going to be saying prismarine, stairs and slabs, walls and all that. But just know that if you're using my resource pack, you're using dark prismarine. And if you're not on uh, my pack, you'll just be using the normal prismarine blocks. So pretty self-explanatory, but just make sure that uh, that is clear uh, to go ahead and get started here. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a green terracotta block like this. And then we're going to place down a deep slate stair followed by a deep slate top slab coming off that stair. Coming off the front of the stair here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign, and behind it we're going to take our dark prismarine, and uh, just a regular prismarine, sorry, and we're going to place down two top slabs to the side. We're going to place down a deep slate stair, a dark oak wood sign, and then another green terracotta block, and then a deep slate uh, top slab block going forward. We're going to take our green terracotta, we're going to go back one, two, three, four, five blocks back, same thing over here, one, two, three, four, five blocks back. We're going to go ahead and place down a green shortcut box to both ends, and then a dark oak wood button on the side of those shortcut boxes. Then going back from uh, that point there, uh, we're going to place down a row of two of dark oak wood fence gates between those shortcut boxes, so across like that. A deep slate tile upside down stair to both ends, and we're going to place down item frames on the sides of these stairs, so on the outside. And then a green terracotta block. And if you're on Java, we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign on the side of that block as well. Just note, if you aren't on Java, you will not be able to place down a sign and item frame in the same block space. So you will have to just go ahead and place down just the item frame or just a sign, whichever you prefer. On the insides here, we're going to go ahead and do a item frame again on the insides. Green terracotta in those item frames. And again, a dark oak wood sign if you're on Java. Um, and again, you'll pick and choose whatever you did for the outside, um, if not on Java. On the middle space here, we're going to go ahead and take our dark prismarine slabs, and we're just going to fill the space in uh, between the fence gates and the prismarine slabs up in there in the front. So it's going to create this design here. And again, here is a top-down view of what that should look like with layer 1 all complete. And with that, we'll be going ahead and jumping up to our next layer, which will be layer number 2. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number 2. For layer 2 to begin with, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of 2 of green terracotta uh, above the space between those top slabs there of deep slate. Then to the sides of these blocks, we're going to place down a green shulker box on its side like so. And then we want to go ahead and place down a deep slate stair coming off the green shulker boxes like that going forward. And we want to go ahead and then place down a row of dark or just regular prismarine between the stairs like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a dark oak sign on the front here of these stairs. And we're also going to go ahead and place down another uh, deep slate tile top slab coming off the side of that stair going forward. After that's done, going ahead and going back to this section here, we're going to place down a row of four of green terracotta across. This is going to be followed by a row of six, so it's going to stick out by one to both sides. Another row of six directly behind that, and then a row of four. We're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, mossy 
cobblestone wall, or uh, in this case, I would just be using, so in my texture pack, we're gonna use a mossy cobblestone wall, not in my texture pack, I would just be going ahead and using a, uh, I'd still use a mossy cobblestone wall. So um, basically same thing, uh, you'll be on both sides. Again, it just kind of depends on your version and what you're, um, what you're running here in terms of your resource pack. So again, just a mossy cobblestone wall for both sides. We're gonna place down another row of four of green terracotta across. This is going to be followed up with these uh, blocks here, which are uh, in my texture pack mossy stone bricks. However, I would probably just keep them green terracotta or use green shortcut boxes if you're not on Java or not using this resource pack. In the space in between these, we're just going to fill it in with green terracotta, just like that. Now, after that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down item frames on these blocks, like that to both sides. And then we're going to go ahead and place down iron bars in those item frames. So it looks like that. Then continuing on, we want to go ahead and then place down a deep slate tile upside down stair to both sides and a dark liquid sign coming off the front of the stair. And then we want to go ahead and place down a dark liquid sign coming off the side of the stair going toward the back. After that is all done there, uh, that is going to wrap that up and we're just going to go ahead and grab ourselves a green banner and place it down on the sides of these um, deep slate blocks just like that to go ahead and finish the back there. After that is all done, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for uh, layer number two. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we'll be going ahead and moving into layer three. For layer three to start with, we're going to place down a deep slate stair on top of these two top slabs, just like that. And we're going to place down an item frame here on the sides of the stairs. So just like what we did on the back. And we're going to then place down a green terracotta block in the item frame. And then again, a dark oak sign if you are on Java. Or you'll place down the dark oak sign. That really kind of, again, depends on whatever your preference is and whichever you think looks better. So that is going to be there on the sides there to create the front. After that's done, we're going to place down a green terracotta block going back from those stairs. And then the space in between those, we're going to go and take our green stained glass panes and place down a row of two. We then want to place down two green terracotta blocks and for a little bit of like the markings for the tank, I think this actually would have been the number or we're trying to represent the number here. We're going to be using our polished diorite to both sides of it. Then after we have that done, uh, we're going to go and place down a dark oak button on the sides here of this uh, these polished diorite blocks. And then we're going to take our green terracotta and place down a row of four of green terracotta. Then a second row of four and then a third row and a fourth row and one last fifth row across like that to fill that space in. Now for our sponsons here with the guns, we're gonna go ahead and place down a grindstone on top of this first block here. And we're gonna go ahead and then place down a lightning rod that's gonna come off this button so that the thicker portion is toward the grindstone. And same thing is gonna be done over here on this side as well. So coming off the, that button like that. We then wanna place down a upside down mossy cobblestone stair to both sides there. And then coming off of it, we're gonna place down a chain, which is gonna represent our machine gun. We're gonna place down another mossy cobblestone wall to the sides here. And if you're on Java, we'll be going ahead and using our debug stick, and we're gonna change the direction of the wall so that it faces forward and connects up to that stair. We'll be doing the same thing here on both sides. So it may take some messing around with, but for my orientation of the vehicle, it is going to be taking the uh, wall and extending it to the left. So you'll just have to figure out what direction it's facing and just go ahead and extend it by giving it a right click. So uh, for me itself, but for you, it's probably going to be a little bit different. So just go ahead and uh, modify it however you need to, but that's what it's going to look like there. We then want to place down another uh, polished or another deep slate upside down stair here to both sides. And coming off that stair, we're gonna place down a dark oak sign. So just like that to both sides. And in the space in the middle here, we're gonna place down a green terracotta block. And we're gonna go ahead and then place down a green shulker box with a chain coming off that shulker box like that. And after that's done, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a deep slate tile slab here and another one over here on this side, just like that. Before we continue on with this layer, I want to go ahead and mention a few things I did forget from the previous layer. Real simply, we're going to place down an item frame on the side of this block here, and also on the side of this one. This is going to be more of a Java feature, as we'll be placing down the item frame in the same block space as this M rod. Uh, so we're just going to place down uh, those, um, or the side of the lightning rod, and then we're just going to place down another star in the item frame, like that on both sides. So a little detail thing, if you're able to on Java, go ahead and do it. Um, if not, disregard it. 
For all versions though, we do have this other banner design and this banner here is pretty simple. I'm not gonna do it in a loom because I think many of you guys can figure it out off the offhand. But basically what we have here is we have a red banner. I did a white stripe going vertically on the left side and a white stripe going vertically on the right side. So it creates this kind of uh, three striped effect. And then on the bottom third of the banner, I went ahead and placed down a line of green. So very simple, it pretty much creates this design here. And we're gonna place this on the side of this green terracotta block to both sides there. And that is going to basically just create the front striping here on the tank, which is very common on the Mark Fives, just the British markings. Anyways, though, um, that is it for that. Let's go ahead and resume layers four for five. Uh, after that's all done, though, that is going to wrap up everything we have for layer three. Again, here is a top-down view of what that should look like so far with this layer complete. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our last final layers, which will be layers four and five. Moving into our last final layers here, we have layers four and five. For these layers to get started with here, we want to go ahead and place down a, a row of two of these end portal frames. They're going to go across the space here. We're going to place down an item frame on the side of this one to the what will be the vehicle, like the right side here. And then we're going to place down a black bed in it and rotate it sideways so that it creates a little viewport there. On the other side, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a chain. And we're going to place down a chain coming off this block or this other end portal just like that to go ahead and create that front machine gun. Continuing on with layers four through five, we're gonna go ahead and place down a gray carpet on top of these two blocks here, as well as one and two dark oak trapdoors back from that carpet. We then wanna go ahead and grab ourselves some daylight detectors. We're gonna place down a row of three of daylight detectors and we're gonna go ahead and turn those to the night mode so they should be that light bluish gray color. After that, we're gonna go ahead and then place down another dark oak trapdoor on the end here, just like that, and that's gonna wrap up our tracks. Uh, once that is all complete, we're going to grab our fence gates and we want to place down two fence gates in this space here. And we're also going to take our debug stick and uh, actually, no, sorry, we're going to just leave them as is. Uh, we'll then grab ourselves some end rods and we're going to place down end rods coming off these two blocks just like that. And then coming off the fence gates going back like so. Then we're going to take our green terracotta, we're going to place down a row of two across and then two mossy cobblestone walls. Then on the very back, we're going to go ahead and place down some levers on top of these two blocks here. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a lightning rod that's going to go on top of this wall. And then another lightning rod out to the sides of this one, just like that. We'll also place down an item frame coming off this uh, lightning rod. This is going to work best if you have invisible ones. If not, I would probably just disregard the item frame. But then we're going to place down a little um, end rod in the middle there. Rotate it sideways just to help make that connectivity look a little bit more realistic that the signaling um, devices connect up like so. Lastly, uh, we're going to take some dark oak wood fence gates, or trap doors rather, and we're going to place them on top of the dark oak wood fence gates and also on top of those uh, daylight detectors. So they will basically create that little top effect there. So before we go ahead and wrap up uh, layers 4 through 5, we're also going to go ahead and grab some green carpet and place it down on top of this uh, mossy stone brick uh, block and also on top of this grindstone so we'll just do that on both sides there to go ahead and finish off the sponsons once that's all done though that's going to wrap up my design here for the british world war one mark uh five male version of uh the kind of first ever uh tank hopefully you guys do enjoy this build and are able to put it to good use if you do have using this build i do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it this can be a thing from a sign on the build to a link to my uh, channel or this video. Uh, if this does appear on any social media sites, just make sure you give me credit for it. And as long as you guys do, you're free to use it for whatever uh, projects you guys are working on. Again, a big thank you to everybody who has supported me so far in my return to uh, YouTube and doing these tutorials. Uh, many of you guys were very excited and I've so far been in having a blast doing it and am really excited to keep on going and see what we can come up with here in the future. I am looking at the possibility of doing some larger scale tutorials. So... Uh, definitely stay tuned and uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you are interested in more content. With that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett 2x4, and I will see you guys next time.